Huh? It's mind boggling to understand how much that material is there to continue that process. Do you think that the nano thermite would be somehow would just consume itself in a short time and be done? Well, apparently there was an excess amount because there were reactions going on. They literally uh, were pouring water on ground zero till, I mean, for months. This was September. The last fires were not out until after the first of the year. Now, how do you keep a fire? I've been around a house that burned down, and, you know, they'll be smoldering a little bit late in the day and maybe the next day, and then it's cool, right? So how do you have a building where these fires, weeks after the event, they're out there and their boots are still melting and all of this, and they describe it as like, like, here, I'm gonna, um, I'm not sure if this is the one. Okay. Here's the classic video on that issue. You recognize John Gross? Six weeks. Smoke coming up. 
that's because that fire just got more oxygen. I mean, these things are burning. At one point, I think they were about 2,800 degrees. Underground, it was still so hot that molten metal dripped down the sides of the wall in Building 6. There were fires of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit below the ground. And all of a sudden, he comes out of this little tunnel screaming, wait till you see what I found. And he pulls in ministers and uh, officials, and there, this cross is fully extended, melted together with the intense heat. The two beams were never initially part of the same structure. Heat literally melted them together. And the piece of metal that's draped over was molten metal that had literally fallen over one of the arms. Uh, it was literally steam, and your boots were going down in certain areas. That's how hot it was. The steam was coming out red in certain areas for the first couple of weeks at least. Go back to the basic uh, premise that there was a uh, pool of melt, melt steel. Uh, I know absolutely nobody, there's no eyewitness who says so, that would produce it. Uh, I was on the site, I was on the steel yards. So I can't, I don't know that that's uh, video uh, around 2,600 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, I think it's probably very difficult to get that kind of uh, uh, temperatures in a, um, uh, in a fire. So I, I don't know the basis. I, I can't uh, address the question, but I don't know the basis. Well, there are some pictures, uh, thermal uh, images show those, those sorts of temperatures in the basement. Would you send them to me? Okay. My name is Mark, and I'm the individual who was questioning Dr. Gross, and he asked me to email to him those thermal images. When I approached him after this talk to get his email address for that purpose, he refused to provide it to me. I think this is important because it reveals the attitude of the NIST investigator, which is one of willful ignorance of what really happened on 9 11. Now to follow up, okay. This is in the FEMA report, which was the first scientific investigation uh, fairly early on after the uh, disaster. And this is a piece of steel from Building 7. And you can see how it's like thinned down to be razor sharp. And there's definite signs of melting. There's even some discussion of vaporization. I mean, it's very, very anomalous to have something like that result in a building fire. And this was discussed in the FEMA report in Appendix C. However, the NIST report did not deal with that. Guess who this is? <laughs> and guess what this is? This is that, you can identify it from the little flecks and everything involved. This is the same piece of steel that the FEMA investigation looked at and said had all of the signs of melting and here he is, looks like he's just shot a, a buck, you know. Uh, anyway. Huh? Yeah, he's grandstanding. Yeah, he's grandstanding. And it's, you know, this is back before the NIST investigation began. So he was part of that FEMA investigation, too. He was the one to help select some of the what's going to be kept and what's going to be trashed. Most of the steel from Ground Zero got cut up sent off to China and melted down. And there's only a few hundred pieces that have been cataloged and kept by NIST. Okay? And he was involved in that process and I guess, you know, minimized incriminating evidence, I guess, but there he is. At that stage, he was thinking, oh, this is quite a good find. Uh, sort of comes back to haunt him. <laughs> 